In a rare turn of events, I found myself in the United Kingdom. And last night, over many, many beverages with Mr. Chris Harris, we got to discussing tuned cars versus stock cars. I saw his tuned S4 decimate an RS4 in a straight line and decided I had to drive it. Chris, who is uncharacteristically silent right now, does a show about brand new sports cars. So he has brought out one of uh, the best chassis that you could buy, probably, am I right? I think it's a, a great example of a standard sports car. Yeah, it is, I think, the slowest two-door Porsche you can buy, is it not? It might well be. It's a standard Cayman 2.7. I'm enjoying this, I get to talk. He's got a very loud voice and he really does dominate the environment. I feel quite small, he's big. I amplify. You do, you do. And you, also, you can also drink like an MF. And uh, anyhow, Which that is a initial. great standard car. I think that represents stock, delicate engineering in a way that this doesn't. So this is how you make something go fast. Is there more fun to be had in this or is there more fun to be had in a stock car? I think that's worth exploring on some amazing Welsh roads. It's really, look, see, that's what the carpet, here, wait, let's see. Okay, so this is, that's that's what carpet sort of should look like if it's very dirty. Can you have some respect, please? Can you have some respect? <laughs> no, and then this is, this is when hair, when it actually starts to grow its own hair. Dude, this is so nasty back here. Look at these bits of wood here, look at these bits of wood. <laughs> Large bits of wood. Oh, it's Audi by Morgan. Look, one, two, three. There's three, four, oh. four slaters there. And look, there's a snail trail. There's been a slug or a snail there. Oh, definitely. You have mice eating through the weather strip. <laughs> I can't believe that there is a reasonably new S4 in the world that is in such bad shape without having been crashed. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. Well, first off, it's fast. Actually, fast isn't first off. First off is it really does smell like a wet dog in here. I think Chris may have actually downplayed it quite a bit how stinky it is in this car. It is very stinky. Also, this car is very beat. The finish is coming off the wheels. There's scratches all over it. The bumper's dented up. It feels loose and pretty shot. So it's fast, but it's fast and sketchy in the same way that uh, Corbin's RX-7 is fast. Oh, but there's the torque. There's the torque. Man, with just a tune on it, it really wakes up this engine. You, it's hard with a, with a supercharged engine. Usually you're thinking pulleys, there's other stuff you want to do, but just the tune really does make a difference. This is tuned the way I would tune my car, which is that you have a car from the factory they leave something on the table, always, whether it's for emissions, noise, uh, uh, fuel economy, whether it's because they know idiots are gonna buy them and beat on them and they don't want them to you know, explode. They want it dumbed down for idiot proof. Let's see if I can get away from Chris right here. Oh, hang on. Corner, down the hill. Oh, and there goes Chris. Yeah. He's, he's way back there. Great brakes. The stasis front brake upgrade is really good. So they always leave something on the table. And with this kind of tuning, like with my Corvette, you just bring it back up to its potential from the factory. And it's not about having a zillion horsepower. I don't want to hit that sheep. That was a close sheep. It's not about having a zillion horsepower. It's about having the horsepower that the designers wanted it to have in an uncompromised state. When you tune a car like this in a simple, basic way, bigger brakes, tighter sway bars, and a tune on the engine, you're really just unlocking the potential that the engineers probably originally saw in the car. My Corvette is tuned the same way. Now, I know you guys out in the audience love these huge horsepower cars, but that's far beyond where the factory would tune the cars. And yes, they are, are ridiculously fast, but on the other end of the spectrum, you're really sacrificing reliability. Most of those cars, whether we say so in the video or not, don't run as good as they did 
if they were stock or lightly tuned. They're more fragile, they overheat, stuff breaks, because they're really pushing the limits. But on a car that you're gonna buy, that's really not the way to go. Those are examples of what can be done, but not always what should be done. I mean, look how tight this road is right here. What would I do if this car had 700 horsepower? Would I be having any more fun than I'm having now with 400 and whatever? Probably not. And in fact, the car still is kind of heavy. I mean, it, this isn't a, a, a lightweight supercar, it's, uh, it's a wagon. So the real appeal of this, of this kind of tuning, is the sleeper factor. This is the key point, isn't it? I'm in a Cayman, I'm having a lovely drive, it's factory fresh, it smells beautiful, doesn't smell of dog, he must be nearly being sick in there, it's disgusting. But we're going along this lovely Welsh road and in a minute we will come to a second gear turn. And that will require me to accelerate out of that turn and he will disappear. And in that moment I might think to myself, oh good lord, I wish it didn't do that. He's going to accelerate like this, and I mean, I am to the boards now. Full throttle, and he just, I mean, it's, it's four car lengths the moment he puts his foot down. It's difficult to describe just how much faster that car is. So is he having more fun knowing that he can basically take care of a Cayman, a car that looks so much faster than that Audi estate? Or am I having more fun because I've got a manual gearbox, I can stir the gears, I can choose different lines and corners, I can enjoy the process of cornering more than he can? I don't know. But there he goes again. It's ridiculous. It's quite nice watching someone else drive your car as well. I now realise that thing does look very cool on the road, because it looks so beaten up. Or as Matt would say, it's such a beater, whatever that means. What are we talking about? To tune or not to tune? We're going to talk about to tune or not to tune. We're also going to talk about the weather in this country, and whether you could actually live in this country. Whether I could? Could you handle the weather? No. What you had yesterday, could you handle that? No, it's horrible. I left New York because the weather was terrible and I live where it's perfect and here it's worse. Do you reckon this is worse than New York? Yes. In New York, if it rains, it rains once in a day. Here it rains five times okay. a day. Okay, so this is, the, this is the, the interesting point made by the base came in 2.7. What would it work out? We said it was 214 foot-pounds of torque, yeah. 275 horsepower. A Ford Focus ST makes 50 more pound-feet of torque than this. This, I, I mean, so well, this car's not actually that fast, is it? No, it's they not claim, fast They claim 6 point something to 60, don't they? But it really doesn't feel like I that. I'm not even sure it would do that. I mean, maybe if you dumped the clutch from 6,000 RPM or something, it might, but... Or if you did what you call a line lock. Oh, yes. What yeah, was the other one? You had another phrase for it, line yeah, lock. Let's find out if we wind it out, though. Even when you're going flat at 5,000 RPM, it's still not that fast. No, you need to what? You need to get it up above five and a half, and yeah. even then, the Audi just goes ding away. Yeah. On the other hand, I've been driving this for 30 seconds, and I'm already having more fun than I was having in the Audi. This is a beautifully balanced car. It is. It's fantastic. And even though this car has, I think. As far as sports cars go, the worst horsepower to dollar ratio that you can buy. That's not that's not even a judgment. That's just, I, I think, a fact. And if it's not a fact, someone will call me out. But it's up there. Certainly the least torque per dollar you can get. Have you looked at us on this screen, by the way? Honestly, honestly, I look like mini-me. You, I'm look, I'm you slump, are mini-me. I'm slumping in the seat. I'll sit up a bit. Let, look. But my, it's like everything about me is so much smaller. My head and everything. I'm like, I'm like half a human being. I'm in sixth eighth scale. Well, no, I'm in nine eighth scale. I think. It's the okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Before we wrap, can I just ask, for the sake of the people of Birmingham, where are you going drinking there tonight? Because I suspect you could drink a pub dry. I don't know, but by the time this video goes up, they'll be able to read about it in the papers. Okay, that's absolutely fine. 
I'm going fine. in that though because that smells like dog. Oh, come and on. has dead insects all over it. It's just it. offensive. It's offensive. your car. It's offensive. Wash your car, Chris. This is the passenger side of this car. I was about to get in the passenger side <laughs> of this car. I need to be over there. If that's cool, I'm going to get in the passenger side of mine. That's tuned, and I'm going back to America now. <laughs> look how little I look. Look at the shot. If I sit down like this, look at the shot. 